So we're here with Tapio Lettinen, the Finnish skipper in the 2022 Golden Globe race. Tapio, how are you feeling ahead of the start? Oh, I'm uh, stressed now, but I know that in a couple of days I will be relieved and, and start, able to start enjoying the race. So what kind of last minute preparations are you doing now? Uh, all possible kinds. <laughs> <laughs> so er everything is and work under process, but, but I'm super happy to have a big team helping me here. So uh, it's a luxury to yeah, well, of course, because unlike the other skippers in the race, you also have an Ocean Globe race team to prepare. And I know they're here with you to support you and help you. How have you found running these two kind of campaigns? Well, uh, partly it's, it's challenging and, and uh, quite a lot of uh, balls need to be held up in the air at the same time. And I'm a bit clumsy with that. but. Uh, uh, luckily, get help with the coordination and organization too. And, uh, and uh, I was just telling my 89-year-old mother that we just passed the safety test, and, and, and the guy who was responsible for my safety equipment is a professional uh, coast guard, uh, Mikko Hongel. Uh, so I'm in very good hands. And now <coughs> we are just uh, putting the Finnish flag on the main sail which was a bit late but but as you see we have a sail sewing machine on the dock here uh, so i have a, a, actually two professional sail makers in the team too so there's all, all kinds of expertise uh, uh, within the ogr team which i'm getting full benefit of now uh, during the preparation for the ggr and how has um, your boat changed from the 2018 race? What, did, what changes have you made to her from 2022? Actually, not very much. Uh, uh, I think maybe the biggest thing is that that uh, I I did a very very ambitious refit uh, for the previous race, but the schedule was so uh, hopeless that that very many things were unfinished at the start of the race and I spent most of the time sailing down the Atlantic uh, trying to finish the things and, and now we have done everything properly and, and the boat is in a shape in which I wanted her to be uh, four years ago. And there are, there are some minor things I have added. I'm, I'm four years older than I was last time so I have added a third furler, furling gear uh, up in the front. <coughs> So I'm, I'll be able to furl the Genoa in, uh, uh, in in squalls. Previously, in the previous race, I had to take it down, which turned out to be quite a hassle at times. So I, I will be quicker to change gears when the weather changes with with this system. And then another thing is that I have uh, changed to hydrovane self steering, which I think uh, suits the design of the boat better because the uh, own rudder of the boat is pretty far forward so the steering blade of the hydromane uh, has double uh, as long leverage uh, from from the mast as, as the boat's own rudder so I expect to be able to use my spinnakers more than, than previously. Yes because you didn't really use your spinnakers last time at all did you? Well, yes, I did, but but not, uh, but mostly it needed to be perfect conditions. If the weather was too light, the uh, wind, wind couldn't stay in control, and, and then obviously when when the, the, the wind picks up, then then the risks also. And I won't be flying my spinnaker in strong winds now either. But, but so it's it's mainly with the, I have the bigger uh, wind vane of the of the hydro vane, so I I'm hoping it to be able to steer the course also in lighter winds so I can keep on flying spinnakers. What do you think is your kind of advantage in this race? <clears throat> what gives you the edge? Um, well, uh, last last time Jean-Luc van der Heer uh, uh, won the race as a 73 year old and, and I'm not sure but I, I think I might be the oldest, oldest participant this time. <laughs> at, at uh, 64 years and uh, I think in this race uh, uh, age just could be a benefit. Uh, so experience counts? 
Yeah, well, it remains to be seen. I, I know that there are some uh, very good young, uh, at least from my perspective, young sailors in the in the fleet. Uh, Kirsten Neuschäfer uh, is one of my favorites uh, to win the race, as well as, as Damien Giro, who are, who are uh, around 40 years old and, and uh, quarter of a century younger than I am. And, <laughs> and I hope that Alex Sells gets his uh, boat ready because uh, if, if he had had the time to get the boat fit for a fight, uh, he would also have been one of my favorites. Yeah, that's Alex Sellers from Spain, who won't be taking part this time round, I don't think. Yeah, yeah it, it's really a pity. Mm. Okay. And you, when you started your last race, you obviously had, you had some problems with the um, self-steering gear. Um, you had <coughs> problems with the engine as well. Have you made changes to that at all? Yeah, the engine has been changed after the last race and, and, and then uh, after the change here in Los Alberdelon, it was still once reinstalled in, in Finland. It was not uh, due to the French, the original in installation and proper shaft lining was done wrong in Finland, and, and, uh, but now, now it should be fine. And as we are only allowed to burn 25 liters of diesel as opposed to 150 last time, so I, <laughs> I'm an optimist and I, so I, I do hate diesel engines and I know that they hate me, but as an optimist I, I, I keep my fingers crossed that I will be able to burn the 25 liters. Last time I, I brought 135 liters back. Uh, uh, after the engine stopped working, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yes, because this last time I remember your boat was so low down to the waterline, and this time she's a lot higher. So you're obviously taking less water, I guess, as well yeah. as less fuel. It, it's a lot higher only because uh, we are only in the process of, okay. of uh, 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 getting the, all the stuff in, in the boat. It will be a half submarine this time uh, again. It cannot be avoided with this design because my uh, my what uh, uh, width at the waterline is, I think, the narrowest in the fleet. Also, the waterline length is the narrowest. So, if you multiply those uh, with each other, you get uh, a lot, uh, lot smaller area to be sunk into the water. And still, I need to get all the same, have all the same gear as everybody else. So, it, it's pretty simple mathematics that, that the boat just will sink deeper but I will try to do my best to eat her lighter and and as you said uh, I have tried to make make her lighter I will be carrying I think 250 liters less of water and 100 liters less of uh, fuel and, and a couple hundred kilos less of food and, and then also maybe 100 to 200 kilos uh, less of other other gear <clears throat> so I, I have changed from from uh, gas heating to an, and gas stove into just a jet boil uh, with, with uh, will be only heating up water and and I copied Susie Goodall's heating system by having a British hot water bottle to be put into my sleeping bag in the southern ocean because so. yeah last time you had a heater didn't yeah, you which yeah. kind of worked but kind of didn't because obviously water used to get in yeah, and because the, it needs to have a flu and, and with yeah. this half submarine I could have the flu open only in the coldest of days and so I used it once a week or once per uh, two weeks but it was nice to get the boat heated up and ventilated and dried up but, uh, this time will be a bit tougher but uh, but I think I'll, I'll manage if, if Susie could do it I, I should be able to do it then. And are you looking forward to going back to the Southern Ocean? Absolutely, that's the reason, that's the main reason I want to do this race. Is I, I think it's an absolutely amazing experience being there. And I enjoyed being there uh, as a 23 year old in the 1981 uh, Whitbread. But then we were a bunch of young guys sailing to, together, steering the boat very aggressively, as, as a flying spinnakers and surfing down, and it was exhilarating sailing sailing single-handed with a small boat uh, it's totally different uh, the, you are closer to the sea and closer to the nature but 
but of course the thrill of sailing is, is nothing compared to to surfing down the huge waves uh, with the whole boat shivering and and doing way over 20 knots and a small movement in the rudder made the whole 20 ton boat to, to react like a small dinghy mm. in in Asteria <clears throat> in extreme conditions I spent most of the time below decks I come on deck only when I need to do a maneuver and, and when the going gets really tough then I go early inside the boat and close the hatch and, and put on the safety belt and, and, and if needed I can steer with my pedal steer, steering uh, in the safety of, of the boat inside so if it would go around I, I would be I wouldn't be exposed which I think is a, a very important safety issue. Well you were the only boat last time that wasn't knocked down. Yeah I think I'm uh, I'm pretty confident that I can say that I'm I'm the uh, or Asteria is the best prepared boat for a knockdown or, or pitch bowling the strongest rig and, and this main hatch arrangement work I can sit uh, protected inside and still have full view and ability to steer the boat but at the same time I was the only one not having a knockdown and that that's according to my theory it has to do with the half half submarine status of the boat I have uh, less exposed uh, freeboard area against the breaking waves and also the, the stern of the boat is so narrow and has so little volume that when it is being hit by a breaking wave from behind it doesn't turn the boat sideways in front of a breaking wave so easily as some of the other, other designs with wider sterns. And then still if it would go on its side as it is so narrow again there's less surface exposed against the still breaking wave so uh, i think the most uh, biggest inclination i had was around 60 degrees maybe last time and, and uh, i said that i was a bit disappointed not to have been able to test whether i could uh, do an eskimo turn and, and keep on sailing but but i'm not 100% confident of, of that disappointment. I'm, I'm uh, at the same time pretty re relieved and I'm, I will be doing all in my powers to avoid a rollover this time also. And, and one, the biggest way of avoiding is, is to actively steer the boat and I have, I have the ability to do it. Can we have a look on board? Of course. Lovely, welcome. thanks. See the team here busily preparing oh, and sewing the Finnish flag on the mainsail there. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so I guess we start in the cockpit. So one, one of the alterations we did um, during the refit was that I made, made the cockpit uh, smaller than, than what it was uh, originally. It used to be wider at the aft part, but I made it the width of the, uh, of the life raft. So that now the only volume which can be filled with water is, is down here. And I think it's about one tenth of the volume of, of some of the other boats. Uh, so if a uh, or when a uh, wave breaks in, it will not uh, uh, affect the stability of the boat as much as, as uh, with some of the others who, who, who can get half of the boat filled with, with the breaking water, uh, water and it will take a lot of time to, to drain out. Mm -hmm. Also, it, the combing uh, in the aft part, the transverse combing here was uh, removed so that the water will slush uh, out, out quicker. Then I also have more watertight bulkheads than, than what is required in the rules. So uh, we have one watertight bulkhead here between these hatches and another one here. And, and, so, and all the uh, through hull fittings are put between these two watertight bulkheads. So if something would break, it would only fill, uh, fill this, this part of the boat and it wouldn't, wouldn't be a, uh, a catastrophe so uh, uh, and uh, 
what else? Well, maybe the biggest uh, uh, thing regarding this refit is that that as this is the oldest oldest boat in the race. It's built already in 1965, and it was designed in 1965. And the reason why I chose the boat uh, is that, uh, for the first thing, I've been a big fan of Olin Stevens since my childhood. But but also I've been uh, ra racing since I have been uh, 10 years old. And and uh, actually, out of the 23 designs uh, allowed by the rules of, of GGR. But th this boat is the only one which was originally designed as a racing boat. And even that it may not, the performance may not be as good as, as some of the more modern uh, cruising boats. I, I still kind of, uh, it, it's important for me that I'm racing in a boat which was designed to be raced. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but, but then, uh, the down, one of the downsides was that, that it, it was a, a full sandwich construction, very modern at its time, in the mid 60s, and and it was a, in a really sorry state when I when I bought, bought the boat in in Fiumicino uh, outside of Rome uh, in the uh, spring of 2017. The whole deck was delaminated, and and we ended up removing the deck and coach roof altogether. And then the uh, Finnish boat designer, Kamu Strollman, redesigned the construction of the hull. So the whole bulkhead structure and also the, the stringers in the bow uh, were uh, uh, designed uh, again. And, and the boat is much, much stronger than what it was originally. All, all my transverse uh, bulkheads are uh, kind of ring frames, so they go around the hull and the deck and also the longitudinal markets uh, come up all, all the way to the, de uh, to the deck. So I learned my lesson, uh, lessons reading Miles Smithon's book uh, from Cape Horn, losing the whole cabin top. Mm -hmm. and, and this is pretty high, but it is super strongly uh, supported too. So I think the boat can be thrown upside down from the top of a wave airborne and, and it will take the, take okay. the beating. Also, the, the hard dodger on top of the <coughs> main hatch is actually uh, designed, or, uh, or I, have, I have bought it from a company which makes racing power boats. So this uh, uh, is certified for cap sizes at two, 200 kilometers per hour. So it should be able to take quite a few tons of water on, on top of it safely. And, and another other important safety feature is that I have my washboards in a cassette so that <clears throat> I can't take them take them away so they, they are always close here and, and I can close this my telephone booth uh, all the way behind me uh, and, and, and sit in the safety of, of the hard dodger and then when I when I'm on deck myself I just close this hatch and, and and tie it so that the boat is, is watertight when I when I am up on deck. And then when the when the going gets rough, I have these lines going through the bulkhead here, and they will I will have a block here, and then then the lines will be attached attached to the tiller here through the blocks through the bulkhead, and. And then I have a sliding seat which I attach at the up, upper end of the uh, main hatch ladder. So I'll, I'll put this here and then I, I can sit here and clo close the shop and, and I have a full view around the boat and the, the compass in front of me and some some uh, coffee and chocolate in front of me. So, and and my my daughter even made a made a safety belt for me. And if you come down below, I'll, I'll show you how I steer the boat when I sit here. John, can you? John, 
can you assist me uh, when I'm demonstrating this uh, way of steering? So there are two lines here, this and this. So if you sit there and just pull them uh, gently so there's pressure, and I'll put my feet into into the stirrups here. These lines, which give support to the to the steering pedals or the stirrups. Do you call them stirrups? Stirrups. stirrups. Yeah. So this this I, I have super tight tight here, and uh, and they in in harbor they, they make moving more difficult. But actually at sea, when the boat is going back and forth, and they just give additional support to me, so that I need to squeeze always through something, and I won't be uh, flying back and forth and, and hurting myself. And uh, so now, if you pull the lines, so the panels come up right here. Well, when I sit here, then I first close the hatch. And then I put on my uh, safety belt, which was made by my daughter last time before the start, because she was worried that if I go upside down, I would break my neck sitting here. Now, John, if you pull the lines, and then I, I put my feet into the stirrups, and and I can use uh, my, my leg. I'm, I'm not a very strong man, but my legs are a bit stronger than my my arms, and, and if, if that's not enough, so I can stand with all my all my weight on uh, on the on the uh, pedals or stirrups, and, and so here I go, I steer like this, and and act actively take the waves, so that when I'm when I'm at the crest of a breaking wave, I I want to turn the stern uh, stern directly against the breaking wave, and then when I'm coming down the wave uh, towards the through of the wave, then I steer. 20, uh, say 15 to 30 degrees off the uh, direction of the waves, and and when so in order not to dive into the into the through, which, which would then induce a pitch pole. And uh, last time uh, when I was using this, the wind vane was at also attached to the to the uh, rudder and to the tiller. So at times there was a disagreement between us two and. But it's still. Um, I, I was happy with the system. I it, it, I, I I could uh, affect the way how we took the waste. But this time I think uh, it will uh, it will work even better, and I, I it it will be easy to uh, 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 set the wind vane in uh, so that it, it's not steering at all, and I, I take full control with the uh, steering pedals. And I'm a bit surprised that that the others have not. Uh, Copy it because because I, I copied this system from Bernard Mortisier, who had an inside steering position already in 1968. But but my Dodger is way better than the one on Zueli, which has small submarine holes in it, and he was steering by with hand with a small wheel inside, and and uh, I think this is super well working system and and. And of course, naturally, make, makes it much much safer because if I would uh, wouldn't uh, succeed in avoiding a pitch pulling or a knockdown, I would be sitting here in the safety of uh, inside the boat. <laughs>